Hi, Gary. It's good to see you again. It's a pleasure to be with you, Chaco. J.D. Edwards has been innovating for the last so many years. And uh, we saw a lot of announcements with the 9.2 release, simplified up upgrades, the IoT orchestrator, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you know, in your world, what, what's a day in a life look like in terms of the latest research you're doing? Something that is transformative and that you think is going to change the world of ERP as we know it today. Great. Uh, well, as you know, one of my responsibilities at Oracle is to run the J.D. Edwards Labs. And in the labs, we look at emerging technologies and look for their intersection with the J.D. Edwards ERP applications the business processes in there. And so we look at a lot of technologies and one of the areas that we're really um, actively involved in right now is, is in the area of cognitive computing or machine learning. And um, you know these are solutions that are really transformative in the industry. And they combine um, aspects such as natural language understanding, so you can interact like a human would interact um, they also reason like a human would. They try to come up with the, the best answer, you know, the most probable best answer um, to, a, to a solution, and act as a human advisor. So we're very excited about, um, about that area of research and um, what it can do to the J.D. Edwards applications. So Chaco, what would you describe as the basics of cognitive computing? Well, Gary, cognitive computing, as you described, is definitely transformative, but I think it's also evolutionary. We're still building out the use cases. And if we were to look at what is the basics of cognitive computing, I call it as the ABCD of cognitive computing. The A being it is high-end analytics. So we've, we talked about machine learning and natural language processing. Here you've got a machine that can understand, reason, and learn with you. That's, a, that's your new URL, understand, reason, and learn. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it, it can process something to the effect of 500 gigabytes or a million books, equivalent of a million books per second. Wow. So it's high-end analytics. The B is, uh, is, is Bluemix technology. So Bluemix is an open source technology leveraging Java and other open source applications. Uh, but it gives you the ability to go across uh, uh, cross-platform applications and interfaces. For example, you can have a cognitive interface on a Watson robot. You could have it on your Apple Watch and you can seamlessly have it on your laptop. And all of that can coexist and it's easy to write because of Bluemix technology. The C part is, is, is the cloud. Now, all of these technologies have been ev evolving, but cognitive really brings it all together. So today with, with cognitive technologies, you have the ability to process massive chunks of data in the cloud irrespective of where you are in the world. And you can do that across the organization because of the hybrid cloud and its existence. And it can run on an IBM hybrid cloud or an Oracle hybrid cloud. It's a cloud technology coming together with analytics. And the D is really the data part. Now if you look at data, the data has, has evolved in, in these last uh, several years, 90% uh, of the data that you see out there was created in the last two years. We're talking about structured data and unstructured data. So your social media uh, tweets, for example, that's data that doesn't often get into your ERP system to analyze mm -hmm. your customer behavior. Uh, you have images and, and voice uh, data. You have video data. You have data from the internet. So a lot of unstructured data that's becoming part of mainstream ERP. And cognitive computing brings it all together. That's what I call as the ABCD of cognitive computing. Right. Analytics, Bluemix, cloud, and data. Now, uh, what I would ask you is, you know, in your research with J.D. Edwards, uh, how does all of this come together in terms of what kind of use cases are you seeing? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think that your explanation of the cognitive services is great. I think there's 23 APIs or different services that we could, we could put in there. And maybe not all 23 are relevant to every industry, but machine learning and cognitive is a, applicable to all of our industries. And so um, and we're really excited about that, um, about that, the, the promise of 
supercharging our, our applications with these cognitive solutions. Um, so, you know, just a couple examples. One is in the area of um, service management. Um, a lot of our customers use JDI Words um, for field service, you know, asset um, equipment uh, maintenance, mm -hmm. and those, yep. those type of activities. And, um, you know, typically it's a, it's a work order process. Right. But with cognitive, you know, what if during that work order and the actual execution of it, um, you had a system that did all this research for you behind the scenes. Right. It was looking at, you know, prior history of that um, part or that type of equipment or, and com that's in JD Edwards, um, combining that with, with um, information available on the internet, mm -hmm. you know, like specifications, manuals, you know, as you meant, s social media feeds like blogging, right. um, sentiment about the, you know, you know, the, the product, and then taking all this data, um, a million books a second, <laughs> and um, digesting that and then presenting to the user, here's the, the most probabilistic solution to your problem um, and not just the first one but maybe several options and then the, the that's where the human reasoning comes into play as to making the the best decision um, based upon all that research now similar uh, cases in the area of, um, of procurement procurement intelligence and when a procurement manager is making a um, has a, a task they need to source some product um, they can um, they can do that certainly based on the data and the history in JD Edwards you know, things like supplier uh, pricing or on-time delivery or the quality. Um, but what if they could supercharge that with industry data, you know, like that supplier's reputation or maybe some very recent um, news about that supplier or news about prices, mm -hmm. pricing, commodity pricing, things like that. Taking all that into account and then um, they could make the best decision for their organization. So, you know, really exciting, just a couple of examples. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot more examples as well that we could go into in more detail. This, this is really, really exciting, Gary. And uh, just listening to you, I'm, I'm trying to absorb these use cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question I have is, uh, from a JD Edwards perspective, as a JD Edwards user, you're used to the JD Edwards modules. Well, let's take, for example, an IoT orchestrator that's been released. Okay. How would this tie in end to end, you know, from a workflow perspective that you've got Cognitive on one side, you've got the JD Edwards application on the other side. How would this use case tie in together end to end? Okay, that's good. So the bigger, the bigger picture of this solution um, is, um, is very interesting and I think has a lot of value. Um, and, and that would be, you know, let's take that maintenance, that um, use case I, I, I spoke about. The preventive maintenance. The preventive maintenance, yeah. Right, yeah. And um, you know, we talked a little bit about how it can help the technician with their task at hand. Right. But let's take a bigger picture view of this. You know, you have a piece of equipment um, that is self-reporting itself, mm -hmm. IoT, um, coming in through the IoT orchestrator, mm -hmm. doing updates. So that's another source of data into this whole the whole process here. And we look at an end-to-end. -end, you know, getting to a point where you're not over or under maintaining a piece of equipment. Um, intelligent data coming from IoT combined with the cognitive solution advising the technician, um, you get to a very efficient thing. And I think our, our um, customers are going to see just huge value in the return and how, you know, you know, the quality of the service they can provide, you know, the, the, the uptime of their equipment, um, and just the overall efficiency of the, of the process. Gary, this is very interesting, the preventive maintenance. You talked about supercharging the ERP. Mm -hmm. Can you get a little bit more specific on cognitive, a cognitive use case supercharging the ERP? Sure. Let's, let's, um, let's take a more specific example of this preventative maintenance use case. And let's say you have something like, a, um, like an oil rig um, that's out on a platform somewhere. Not a lot of people around there. Um, but what if you could put a camera on that piece of equipment or a um, vibration detector, um, um, combine that with maybe some weather data mm -hmm. local to that area. Um, just think about the, the decisions you could make about um, the maintenance of that, of that piece of equipment, you know, based on the vibration of it or based on the sound waves it's emitting. That's a pattern that, we, that, that a cognitive solution can detect and um, make an intelligent decision on, such as, um, invoking an IoT orchestrator flow to, to take some action in, mm -hmm. in JD Edwards immediately. So 
um, hopefully that, that brings it a little bit more to life about you know what a real world um, solution could look like. So we're viewing this this technology as evolutionary. Um, that as I've used the term several times, supercharge our existing business processes in JD Edwards, um, but it's also transformative to our to our customers' business and some of the the use cases that we described today. But could you paint? IBM's vision for cognitive computing? The vision that uh, we call as cognitive, which is part of the ERP ecosystem, I would, I would look at it as three concentric circles. So if you think of the inner circle, which is the core part of the circle, you have JD Edwards and the cognitive app, apps sitting together. That's where the analytics is happening. The second circle is really the data collection circle. We talked about the different types of data, the structured data and unstructured data. There's data from social media, there's big data, there is uh, structured data coming from the databases, there is voice kind of data, there is sound data, and all, these, all this data collection, data from the internet, knowing your suppliers you know, that are out there. Uh, so that data collection happens in the second circle. And the third circle is, is really the where the use cases really come to life because it is the business applications, the different uh, modules of JD Edwards, for example, supply chain and logistics, HCM, CRM, all these would form part of the outer circle. So the, the, the vision really is cognitive is embedded into an ERP application mm -hmm. such that we're analyzing this data on a continuous real-time basis and impacting the productivity of these use cases in the outer circle. Now these use cases have already existed. You know, they, they exist in any ERP scenario. The big difference is now you can put high-end analytics, you can put natural language processing, mm -hmm. the machine learning, the ability to reason and learn over time, and completely transform those particular areas, the, the modules, the supply chain. For We talked about supply chain, uh, and you come up with use cases like field tech services and procurement intelligence. And we can take that across all the different business functions in the outer layer. And that is the vision of Cognitive. It is yeah. to transform a, a JD Edwards or an ERP from a system of record into a system of intelligent thinking. Great. I love that. And um, as we talked about some of the use cases, just this automation and just taking out a lot of that day-to-day -day research and activity and uh, you know, of, you know, of, the, um, of the user, of the, the human user here, and, and let them do what they, they do best, and which is making decisions. Um, just a Absolutely. very powerful, just huge value for, um, for, for businesses around the world. Um, so Absolutely. we're really excited to continue to work with this partnership. Yeah. With that note, uh, Gary, uh, we've seen that this is transformative, it's evolutionary. I'm sure our customers, our clients would be interested in, in getting on this, in this journey. Yep. What would you suggest as next steps uh, for J.D. Edwards clients uh, okay. that want to get on this journey. Okay. Well, th I mean, there's, there's a lot to these solutions. There's these 23 different APIs. Um, not all of them are applicable to every business process, every need. So there's, there's definitely a workshop process to figure out where companies can get the most value out of these solutions. And, you know, maybe a little crawl, walk, run approach as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just encourage people that are interested in this and they can really, you know, see the vision that we, that we painted out around uh, moving to a system of intelligent thinking um, to, to engage with us. You know, contact their IBM um, representative, contact uh, me or your J.D. Edwards representative, and we'll, um, we'll just start with a, a simple webinar and have a little more discussion around this and, and um, hopefully evolve this into a, a workshop and a, and a real project that can, that can deliver this value. All right. Thank you, Gary. It was nice meeting you again. Okay, thank you. It's been a pleasure.